Grab your pen, your notebook, and your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self. Glory to God forevermore. We're looking at being filled with the Spirit. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse number 18. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. And doesn't start a statement. So let's begin from verse 16, the pretext. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Next verse. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. 18. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. He gives an instruction. Be filled with the Spirit. It's an instruction. It's not an advice. Be filled with the Spirit. Look at verse 19 and 20 of Ephesians chapter 5. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He gives an instruction. He says, be filled with the Spirit. So we're going to study scriptures and see what it means to be filled with the Spirit. Acts chapter 19 verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Verse 3. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 6. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spoke with tongues, and prophesied so we said number one in getting people filled with the spirit you have to give them information that's number one give them information take time to explain what you are teaching on the holy spirit brother paul took time to explain the baptism of john to explain jesus and then explain the holy ghost so you must take time to explain number two we say information will always carry instructions information will always carry instruction in getting people filled with the spirit you give them instructions and after you have clearly explained the instructions to them then you lay hands on them you lay hands on them and let the people know that they also have a responsibility to receive they will have to receive they have to open their mouth and speak Acts chapter 2 verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So they have a responsibility to receive and open their mouth and speak. The Holy Ghost does not open your mouth for you. You will have to open your mouth yourself and begin to speak by faith. Next one is ensure there is an experience to it with practice. When getting people filled with the Holy Ghost, ensure that there is an experience. After you share with them and minister to them, you lay hands on them and make sure they receive the Spirit. All right? Grace gets more effective with practice, especially those of us who are called to minister to people. We must practice. It's not enough to just talk. We've got to lay hands on them, minister to them, make sure they receive of the spirit ensure also that there is no confusing crowd no confusing crowd when ministering the baptism of the holy ghost to people make sure there is no confusing crowd any intelligent minister deals with the confusing crowd you know it's like brother paul ministered and when he discovered the crowd was mixed he separated the disciples from the others so make sure there is no confusing crowd jesus will always send them out remember when he came to the house of the lady that was dead and the mourners were mourning and crying as soon as jesus entered and said she will live again they started laughing they turned their cry to laughter and the bible says jesus ordered them out of the place so you've got to separate them from the confusing crowd 
All right, let the audience know that tongues is not a human language. Tongues is not a human language. What the person is speaking may sound like gibberish, but it is supernatural. Tongue is not a human language. The book of First Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Tongues are unknown to humans. Is the language of the supernatural. For no man understandeth him. How be it? In the spirit he speaketh mysteries. In the spirit he speaketh mysteries. It's very important to know that tongues are not human language. They are supernatural. They are supernatural language. Then the next one is, it is very vital to minister to people once they get born again. Once you get them born again, get them baptized with the Holy Ghost at once. Don't delay it. Get them baptized with the Holy Ghost at once. There's something about that salvation faith. You just use that their salvation faith and get them to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you know, when we say the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we are talking about utterance. We are talking about utterance, speaking in tongues. We are talking about speaking in tongues. Now, where a person has been saved for long and he has never spoken in tongues, you must answer all his probing questions. The reason why many people get born again and stay in church for many years and are not speaking in tongues is because, first of all, it was not taught them well. Then secondly, they have questions that nobody has been able to answer. So every time they think about receiving the Holy Spirit, those questions, you know, become a hindrance. Every time they think of being filled with the Spirit of the baptism of the Spirit, those their questions become a blockade. So you have to take time with people that have been Christians for a long time. You have to take time and deal with the probing questions that may arise in their hearts. Someone says, how do I know if my tongues are fake? Well, if your salvation is fake, then maybe your tongues will be fake. But if your salvation is genuine, your tongues cannot be fake. The book of Luke chapter 11 verse 11 where we read, If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Look at the next verse. Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Tathin. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? If you ask the father for the Holy Spirit, what will you receive? Holy Spirit. You cannot ask the father for Holy Spirit and an evil spirit take over. No. Just like you cannot ask your father for bread and he gives you a stone. If human beings that are evil compared to God, do not give stone for bread. How much more your father in heaven? He will give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him. That is assuring. The next thing is learn to lay hands. Remember, laying hands is not just the head. You can touch the hand, you can touch the shoulder, but you must lay hands on people that are receiving the Holy Spirit. Guide the recipient. Guide the person. When the person begins to receive and the person begins to speak and the person is not sure, Give him confidence. Yes, that's it. That's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's it. That's it. That's it. Don't stop. Go ahead. That, that gives him confidence to continue speaking and flow. Can somebody shout a good amen? We're not just teaching you for yourself. We're teaching you so that you can effectively be a blessing to other people. All right? That's very, very important. And when the person is speaking tongues, speak with him to help him. You too, be in speaking mode to help the person. All right? Now, it's also important to get the people to interpret their tongues at the point they are receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. To interpret means just the same way you speak the tongues. The same way you spoke in tongues, when you speak, speak it in English. When you speak in tongues, listen to your spirit. Listen to your spirit. As you're speaking, you will understand what you're speaking. You interpret in English. From the first day, Learn to interpret. Remember, speaking in tongues plus interpretation equals to prophecy. Equals to prophecy. So, when you begin to speak, also, the same faith with which you spoke is the same faith with which you interpret. Let him that speak in tongues also pray that he may interpret. That's what brother Paul said. I will pray in the spirit and I will pray with my understanding also. That is, I will speak and i will interpret 
when you help people do that it will help them to grow in spirituals when people start you know speaking in tongues and interpreting or prophesying from the one it will help them to grow in the things of the spirit can somebody shout hallelujah and you can get somebody baptized with the holy ghost on telephone you can call somebody on phone minister to him on phone and get him to speak in tongues i've done that many many times across continents of the world you just give the person instructions show him scripture minister to him and just ask him to begin and that's it the person is gone the person is already speaking in tongues hallelujah it's better to have spirit filled believers tongue talking believers than have believers who are not sure if the supernatural is real because speaking in tongues is the doorway to the supernatural speaking in tongues is the doorway to the things of the spirit it's better to have believers filled with the spirit than have believers who don't understand spiritual things so when we talk about spiritual things they'll just be looking at you it's better to have people to come into the supernatural and it comes by practice it comes by practice you get them to speak in tongues you get them to interpret you get them to prophesy you begin to teach them from the word of god precept upon precept and i'm going to do a lot of that teaching this week the whole of this week on being filled with the spirit and we shall look at a lot of supernatural things from the word of god remember like i said when you get people filled with the holy ghost there are two gifts in operation the gift of faith and the working of miracles because tonguing is the working of miracles all right, to receive is a gift of faith. So two gifts are in operation. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And you know, there's something about the right atmosphere. When you get people filled with the Holy Ghost, you know, and the gifts begin to operate, you just find out that people can do a lot of things, supernatural things, if you just unlock them and open them up to this dimension. You just open them up to this dimension. All right, and it's important to know that honor will always receive from God. In people receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they must have an attitude of honor. Because honor will always receive from God. Honor will always receive from God. Hallelujah. Remember, what you don't respect, you cannot attract. You can only attract what you respect. Honor must be your lifestyle. God can never put you in a position you don't respect. God can never put you in a position that you don't respect. We saw Jesus couldn't do much in his hometown because of their unbelief. They were walking in disrespect and dishonor. Dishonor is very costly. It's very, very costly. Somebody can be in dishonor and not even know it. One of the ways to know that you're in dishonor is if you find out that the grace available in the ministry everybody's doing well and thriving well you're the only one that is not doing well you need to do an honor check it's very very important can somebody shout hallelujah all right so let's examine what it means to be filled with the spirit what it means to be filled with the spirit that means i must be filled with the spirit because the bible says i should be filled with the spirit and we're looking at the subject or being filled with the spirit now before i go ahead this letter was written to the church in ephesus so let's back up ephesians chapter 1 verse number 1 paul an apostle of jesus christ by the will of god to the saints which are at ephesus and to the faithful in christ jesus in other words he is writing to the church located in ephesus if you go to acts chapter 19 where we just read you will discover something happened in that church because prior to this period paul was in corinth then he came to ephesus and he met certain disciples from what we read then he asked them a question have you received the holy ghost since you believe have you received the holy ghost since you believe and i will explain that in details because that statement sounds like you can believe and not receive the holy ghost but that's not what brother paul implied have you received the holy ghost since you believe if it's not well explained you will think that somebody can believe and after believing then he will now look for the holy ghost all right so we need to do some explanation of that statement because that's not the implication all right then the bible tells us in that acts chapter 19 verse 4 let's look at verse 4 5 and 6 then said paul john verily baptized with the baptism of repentance saying unto the people that they should believe on him which shall come after him that is on christ jesus 
when they had these they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus to be baptized here means they were born again they were immersed into christ they were immersed into jesus now after being born again look at the next verse six and when paul had laid his hands upon them the holy ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and what was the next thing they did and prophesied so in other words there was a ministry of the spirit in this church at ephesus and if there was a ministry of the spirit when then giving an instruction to them to be filled with the spirit if there was a ministry of the spirit at ephesus why did brother paul in chapter 5 remember they were filled with the holy ghost in acts chapter 19 this brethren at ephesus but then in chapter 5 of Ephesians, he now said to them, be filled with the Spirit. Acts chapter 2 is a very popular place where a lot of people read their confusion from. They read their confusion. Especially when they read the, the scriptures, says, and there appeared unto them clothing tongues as of fire. Then he now says, and they heard them speak in their language. So they now say, well, if the Holy Spirit that Christians claim to have today is the real one why are they not speaking japanese chinese korean without learning it and that is confusion because they have read but they read their thoughts into the scripture they did not read the scriptures with the scriptures as to arrive at an understanding now please listen very careful this is where the pentecostal movement came from the pentecostal movement yeah, some people say I'm a Pentecostal, but they don't even know what Pentecost is. So look at Acts chapter 2 verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Next verse. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Verse 3. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance the day of pentecost is a feast of the jews that is celebrated nine days after passover in other words they were feasting on that day it was an annual feast a feast like the feast of unliving bread there was another feast in israel called the feast of atonement then you have the feast of sabbath then you have the feast of first fruits you know then you also have the feast of the passover now when the passover happens in israel you count 49 days on the 50th day is the feast of pentecost 49 days after passover it was an annual event in israel which is called the feast of weeks or the feast of first fruits where they bring in the barley harvest the increase of their field and all all of that is a jewish feast understood by jews so when the day of pentecost was fully come it means 49 days after passover was pentecost so don't attach any mysterious meaning to the word pentecost there's nothing mysterious to that word pentecost holy ghost fire fire follow me as in the days of pentecost fire follow me as in the days of pentecost which of the pentecost because there were many pentecost pentecost was a yearly feast yearly feast yearly feast so if you're asking for holy ghost fire like in pentecost which of the pentecost meaning there should be nothing mysterious about the day of pentecost the real deal is the outpouring of the spirit because pentecost was celebrated every year so in this particular pentecost things were different but there was even pentecost after the day of pentecost okay there was another pentecost and the next pentecost the holy ghost didn't come in the next pentecost look at acts 20 15 let's see it together and we sailed thence and came the next day over against chios and the next day we arrived at samos and tarried at trigulium and the next day we came to Miletus. Next verse. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus. Because he would not spend the time in Asia. For he hasted if it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. This was Pentecost after Acts chapter 2. 
This was Acts chapter 20. Another scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 8. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. The reason why I'm reading is just to let you know that Pentecost is not mysterious. It's just a yearly feast of the Jews. So Pentecost was a feast of the Jews, but it coincided with a divine arrangement. That particular Pentecost happened after Jesus died and rose from the dead. And somebody said to me somewhere, are you a Pentecostal? Mm, I'm simply a Catholic. I'm simply a Catholic because Catholic simply means universal. Universal. But Pentecost has to do with a yearly feast of Jewish people. It's better to be a Catholic than to be a Pentecost. <laughs> I am a Catholic, but I'm not a Roman Catholic. Because Roman Catholic is Italiano, Papito. <laughs> I'm not Roman Catholic, but I am a Catholic. I belong to the Universal Church of God. All right. So the word Pentecost has to do with the feast of the Jews, which basically had to do with Jesus, because Jesus is the celebrator of Pentecost. Jesus is the reality of the feast. The feast was celebrated in Israel to point to Jesus. So Jesus is the celebrator of the feast. It was celebrated in the Old Testament as types and shadows. But was made real in the giving of the spirit. It became a reality in the giving of the spirit. So Jesus fulfilled just one Pentecost. And that was his last Pentecost. In that Acts chapter 2 where we read, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. As the Spirit gave them utterance. So we read in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18, be filled with the Spirit. Then in Acts chapter 2 verse 4, they were all filled. Now, what happened in that Acts chapter 2 is a fulfillment of prophecy. That is, there was a prophecy in scripture about what happened in Acts chapter 2. And we're going to read two prophecies or we're going to read two promises given by God through his prophets about the spirit. Now before we read the prophecies, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 to 20. But as God is true, our word toward you was not yea and nay. For the son of God Jesus Christ who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. In him yea and amen means in him fulfilled and fulfilled. Yea means fulfilled, Amen means fulfilled. By who? Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the fulfillment of the promise in the Old Testament. In John chapter 5 verse 39, Jesus said to the Jews, You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. So the scriptures testify of Jesus. In other words, the testimony of Jesus is in the Old Testament where it points to Jesus. Look at Revelation chapter 19 verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy in other words what identifies a prophet in the old testament is the content of his prophecy about jesus what identifies a prophet in the old testament is the content of his prophecy concerning jesus that is jesus is not one of the messages of the bible jesus is the central figure of the scriptures the bible is a christocentric book that is why john chapter 1 verse 1 calls jesus the word 
in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the same was in the beginning with god all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made verse 10 he came unto his own and his own received him not verse 12 but as many as receive him to them gave the power to become the sons of god verse 13 which were born not of flesh nor of blood nor of the will of man but of god verse 14 and the word became flesh the word the word of god is a person the word became flesh and dwelt among us so jesus is the word what there means the logos logos logic the intent jesus is the message he's the thought pattern of god in the bible hebrews 4 12, for the word of god is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart the bible tells us in revelation 19 13 that Jesus' name is called the word of God. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. His name is called the word of God. So every prophet's ministry is indicated by the revelation of Jesus. So the revelation is either a promise or a prophecy. In Luke chapter 24, we know the background on the way to Emmaus. He made the disciples and he said to them, what are you guys discussing? And they said to Jesus, are you a stranger in town? Have you not heard about Jesus, a good guy that was killed the other day? Jesus turned to them and he said to them, oh fool, slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. All that the prophets, did you observe that? So all that the prophets have spoken is what Jesus is about to point out. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things? And to enter into his glory. Next verse. I'm beginning at Moses and all the prophets. All of them. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures. The things concerning himself. So the central theme of the scriptures is Christ. He is the message of the scriptures. In other words, the prophets prophesied about him. Look at Luke 24, 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opening their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Things must be fulfilled, all things. All things must be brought to pass. So the scripture centers around him. The prophecies and the prophets centers around Christ. So if he is the promise fulfilled and Christ is the prophecy fulfilled, he is the promise fulfilled, he is the prophecy fulfilled, then we need to find out what the promise is about. In Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 where we read, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost when the day of Pentecost was fully come and began to speak in tongues. So I will show you two of those prophecies in the Old Testament and we will focus on those two in this teaching. First prophecy, Ezekiel 36, 24. For I will take you from among the hidden and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. On the line within you. Will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you an heart of flesh. 27. And I will put my spirit within you. If your Bible is mine, I will underline that. My spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and you shall keep my judgments and do them what will he put in them he said a new spirit then he says a new heart then he classify it by saying my spirit a new spirit a new heart then my spirit okay i will pour my spirit within you so what will he give to people who believe? 
his spirit his spirit will be given to everyone who believes in the gospel all right come to joel chapter 2 verse 28 and it shall come to pass afterward that i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions what did we read in ezekiel my spirit here he says i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh upon all flesh so we have two words realize both of them are prophecies and promises about his spirit but one says i will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues the other one says i will pour out my spirit upon you and you shall prophesy one says my spirit within and cause you to walk in my statues the other one i will pour my spirit upon and you shall prophesy before we go to what both of them mean remember he's not referring to two spirits it's the same one spirit so i will pour out i will put my spirit i will pour out upon i will put my spirit within two of them all right so we'll find out what they mean jesus also spoke about his spirit in john chapter 14 john chapter 14 verse 16 and i will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you for ever the word comforter is the greek word parakletos parakletos means a strengthener or a teacher one who has expert and absolute knowledge a paraclete one who has expert and absolute knowledge he didn't say i will give you a comforter who will be hugging you he didn't say i will give you a comforter who will be pampering you he said i will give you a comforter he will guide you into all the truth that means the comforter is not coming to hug you he's coming to teach you he's coming to strengthen you and equip you not to pamper you oh holy spirit please just come now please just come now he is not coming to hug you he's coming to teach you <laughs> he's coming to teach you and he will abide with you forever all right john 14 17 please pay attention even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive so a man that is not born again cannot receive the spirit whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but you know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you so now he shall be with you and in you which of the prophecy was jesus referring to ezekiel or joel ezekiel i will put my spirit within you and you will walk in my statues all right now look at john 15 26 but when the comforter is come whom i will send unto you from the father even the spirit of truth which proceeded from the father he shall testify of me look at john chapter 16 verse 7 nevertheless i tell you the truth it is expedient for you that i go away for if i go not away the comforter will not come unto you but if i depart i will send him unto you next verse when he is come he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment john 4 14 but whosoever drinketh of the water that i shall give him shall never thirst but the water that i shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life that is salvation john chapter 3 verse 3 except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god watch verse 5 jesus answered verily verily i say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god so water which is symbolic of the spirit which is symbolic of the spirit look at john 7 37 in the last day that great day of the feast jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink he that believeth on me as the scripture had said 
out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. 39. But this spake he of the spirit. So water speaks of the spirit. Uh, is it clear now? Water speaks of the spirit which they that believe on him shall receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So we have seen Jesus in the book of John emphatically talking about the spirit within. The spirit within. Look at Luke 24 verse 48. And your witnesses of these things verse 49. And behold I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Luke wrote the book of Acts. So look at Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and under the uttermost part of the earth. You cannot have salvation without the Holy Spirit. You cannot have salvation without the Holy Spirit. I have had people who are born again say they want to receive the Holy Spirit. You cannot receive the Holy Spirit after you have received the Holy Spirit. Because you cannot have salvation without the Holy Spirit. So let's do some detailed explanation on Jesus in John 16. He clearly says that it is the Holy Spirit that will convince the world of sin. He will convince the world of sin. So, there is no salvation without the Holy Spirit. There is no salvation without the Holy Spirit. You cannot be saved without the Holy Spirit. What you did when you believed the gospel is you received the message of the Spirit. When you believed the gospel, you received the message of the Spirit. There can be no salvation without the Holy Spirit. So what you did when you believed the gospel was that you received the message of the Spirit. Look at 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1, 2, and 3. Now, concerning spirituals, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Verse 2. You know that you are Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Verse 3. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of God called Jesus a cost. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. No man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. So how did you get born again? Romans chapter 10 verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. No man can say Jesus is Lord, the Lord Jesus, but by the Holy Ghost. And shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So to say Jesus is Lord will be by what? The Holy Ghost. And when you say Jesus is Lord, what happens? You are saved. So who saved you? The Holy Ghost. Who did you receive when you got born again? You received the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You received the Holy Ghost. So every believer that is saved has the Holy Ghost in him. Has the Holy Ghost in him. So clearly, no one can be saved but by the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that brings the message of salvation to us. Is the Holy Spirit that convinces the heart to be saved. Is the Holy Spirit that works the regeneration. Because regeneration is the work of the Spirit. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So what does it mean to be born again? To be born of the Spirit. Symbolically, to be born of water. You know, there's a word called the Kai rule of Bible interpretation. Kai. Applying the TKS rule. The TKS rule is called Kai. Where you have and. And the and is not a conjunction. But an explanation. And as an explanation. TKS. Let me give you an instance. Second Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
and the love of God and the sweet fellowship. Is there sweet in that scripture? Is there sweet? There's no sweet too. You like sweet too much. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the sweet communion. Is there sweet? No sweet. It is we that used to lead our sweetness into the Bible. <laughs> and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Now we think it is three things, but it was not three things. The grace of our Lord Jesus is the love of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus is the love of God. And the love of God is the fellowship of the Spirit or the communion of the Spirit. So what it simply means is that each statement explains the order. The grace of our Lord Jesus, which is the love of God, the love of God, which is the communion of the Holy Spirit. So the communion of the Holy Spirit is the grace. Did you see that? The communion of the Holy Spirit is the love. It is not supposed to be a benediction after service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion. No. The grace of our Lord Jesus is the love of God. The love of God is the communion. And what we did in the service was the communion of the spirit. So by implication, when we were communing with the spirit, we were sharing the grace in the service. It's not a benediction. It is the body of the service. So that's why we don't share grace as a benediction. What we are doing right now as I'm teaching, what is happening? We are sharing the grace because grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge so as i'm bringing you knowledge what am i sharing all over grace so by the time the service is over without even benediction we have already shared the grace and if you're waiting to share communion at the end you have missed the service because the communion already happened while the service is going on so the grace of our lord jesus christ is the love of god the love of god is the communion of the holy ghost when you are born of the spirit, you are born of water symbolically or you are born again. So when we say you are born again, what we mean is you are born of the life of God. You are already a carrier of his nature. You are already a carrier of his spirit. Yeah, born again means you are a carrier of God's nature. You are a carrier of God's spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of what? Of the Holy Ghost. Which is where? In you. So where is the Holy Ghost? In you. Your body is his temple. So right now, if you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit. You can't be born again without the Holy Spirit. Look at Titus chapter 3 verse 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. How? By the washing of regeneration. That is renewing of the Holy Ghost. So the washing of regeneration is the renewing of the Holy Ghost. And that is what the water symbolizes. Born of water means the Holy Ghost will cleanse you. That when the Holy Ghost entered you, he cleansed you. And as long as he stays inside you, you are cleansed. You are purified because the Holy Ghost indwells you. He lives on your inside. And that's what Ezekiel was talking about. He talks about, I will cleanse you with water. I will sprinkle water upon you. That cleansing is the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. It's not like God cleaned you up, then put his spirit inside. The spirit coming inside is the cleaning. And as long as he's staying inside, he keeps you clean all the time. So by putting the spirit in you, he cleaned you up. The one who cleanses is the spirit. You cannot cleanse yourself. Nobody can purify himself. It's the Holy Spirit that does the cleansing and purifying. How does he do that? By coming to live inside. I will live in you. I will walk in you. 
So he becomes your nature. Your nature is the Holy Spirit. So from the minute he lives in you, you are now a holy temple. Your body belongs to God. Why? Because the Holy Spirit lives inside. God owns your body. So you cannot be a Christian without the Holy Spirit. No. A Christian asking for the Holy Spirit is in fantasy island. Because you already have the Holy Spirit. Romans 8.8 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Next verse. But you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of god dwell in you now if any man have not the spirit of christ he is none of his say with me i have the spirit of christ i am his he is mine i belong to him the spirit of god with all the gifts and all the fruits lives inside me right now i have all the gifts, all the fruits of the spirit inside me. I didn't hear a good amen. amen. Say with me, I am holy. I am purified. I am sanctified. Because the Holy One lives on my inside. Say, I am the Holy Ghost. We are one. Say, the Holy Spirit is my nature. Say, my nature is of the spirit of God. So what cannot be found in God? cannot be found in me i have the spirit of god actively at work in my inside say the spirit of god is actively at work in my inside i'm born of the spirit i live in the spirit i walk in the spirit i speak in the spirit i function in the spirit i sleep in the spirit i wake up in the spirit i operate in the spirit i pray in the spirit anything i do it's in the spirit because the spirit is my nature it's not a feeling it's my reality let's blast in tongues for a few seconds Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Agaba roko to sekele de barakata nakaya. Henge bo joko lo do baba barata balide baba ba. Henge re de bo joko lo do barakate nekele. Henge le bo roko to sekele de baba rana manegele na mahata. Henge bo joko lo do baroko to lina mama ya na gadi galaya. Henge bo roko to sekele de brina gadanga. Lengro do joko lo do brina katoli de baba. Henge bo joko lo na maroko to skataya. I want you to yield, yield to the spirit now. Yield to the Holy Ghost. Those online on TV on radio, just open your mouth. Open your mouth. Once you're born of God, open your mouth and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Let go so totally in now. Look for somebody. Look for one or two persons. Hold them and begin to minister to one another. 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 Sodelia, le gre de jokolo de baro goda sakaya na mala na mana, engele de boroko to seke, aya balo de bolo de bore gede se tele na ma, le mbronda jokolo, le goro to seke, 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 ah, shokolo de boss. Go ahead, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Rise like an edifice. Rise like an edifice. Higher and higher and higher. Ango bosso tole baraka tenenga. Engele de boje ke. Boro godo zoko. Boro godo zoko. Boro godo zoko. Boro godo zoko. Enge boro koto sika le de baba. Le boro godo jakele de baya. Le gara de bazo bere de bele de babom boro godo soko le de boro hota. Engele de bojoko lodo berekete sekeya Enge boloto berekete ne Le boro godo seke lida babara gada seke lene ma Mambrondo zoko lodo boro kotoske telia Thank you father Listen to me everybody 
in the name of Jesus. Look at me, everybody. The Bible says, covet the things of the spirit. Covet them earnestly. Covetousness is a sin. But when it comes to spirituals, brother Paul said, covet them. That is desire. Strongly desire to see yourself operating supernaturally. Desire to see yourself operating in miracles. Desire to see yourself lay hands on the sick and they recover. Desire to see yourself function in the supernatural. Desire to see yourself prophesy. Desire to see yourself give a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. Out of a desire inside you, open your mouth and pray. Out of a desire, begin to pray in the spirit. Desire spirituals. Kara tobaka. Lego joko lo de bo shakaya na. Membra da zoko lo de babaraga da se kele ne maha. Enge bo joko lo de boro godo sa kele. Le breke teke li da bababara katika li da balo no moho. Enge bo joko lo de brina katana gaga. Desire, desire, desire. Desire it and I will show you a more excellent way. Rato bere kete ni gala da bara kato nege li da baya na gadaga. Enge bo joko lo de Boro, Rakoto be sika la da baba, le gorodo sika la na mama, nangranda joko lo da bolo, le garato seke li da baba, agaba joko lo da boro koto seke ya, le ga joko lo do, ege ba 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 joko lo do, angele ne mosata, angele re baroko tena, hey, go ahead, go ahead, rato be seke re teke le da boro, le desire and receive it 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 mozaka landa bosoto mozoto le de borokotonia mozoko lo de borokoto seke yana maha enge bozoko lo de borokoto seke le de baba le gorodo zoko lo de borokoto seke le ya le gorodo bozoko le de borokoto seke yana thank you father in the name of jesus one more prayer they said and lord now grant unto your servant that with all boldness they may preach your word and that signs and wonders be done in the name of your holy son Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. I like you to ask for boldness, Father. I receive boldness, boldness to preach your word, boldness to manifest your glory, boldness to demonstrate your kingdom, boldness to manifest your power. Shoko enge boroko to sekele de baba lebro sakale de be la bota magele tekele de gara agara to sekele diba le diba le diba le diba le diba ege ba sokala nagale de gara kataka hey shakola de baba shakola de baba boldness 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 to speak your word boldness to speak your word enge bo shotala da enge bo shokala de ba enge le de bo shotala la boroko to sekala da with all boldness, we may speak your word. Angabo sotolo, angere ne mo sota. Ege ba shokola de bobo. Ege le ne mo sota la. Ege le ne mo sota la ba. Ask for boldness, boldness to speak the word. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Pastor, praise. Please come up. Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Gabriel, Pastor, Pastor. Pastor Raymond and Pastor Clinton, come forward. Just climb this first step. Come, for, come forward. Let's minister to all of you. Just line up here. Line up here. Line up here. And if you desire, let your prayer come out with desire. Stand, stand, stand. Let your prayer come out with a desire. With a heart of desire. Father, boldness. Father, I receive the miraculous. Father, I receive power. Father, I go forth in power. I go forth in signs, wonders, and miracles. Open your mouth and pray. Pray with a heart of hunger. Pray with a burning desire. Let's lay hands on them and minister to them. Let's 
release, let's release. Let go soka la rababa. Let brata soka la rababa. Boldness to preach your word. Boldness to declare your word. Agarato saka. Lagarato 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 saka. Haga 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 haga
and father we rejoice where there were sickness and diseases they are healed healed by the spirit of god bodies be restored bodies be quickened bodies be quickened in the name of jesus and father we rejoice where people need miracle receive miracles thank you for answered prayer in jesus precious name and every believer shouts that amen on a note of finality amen. hallelujah in another one or two minutes i'll be joining mr michael bush and we'll be answering questions and responding to your phone calls and bringing clarity to you by the word i want to take up your offerings quickly wherever you're watching or listening the banking details are on the screen both on social media and on television mr bush will read the banking details for those on radio and everybody else in the building we give in faith we give in honor we give in acknowledgement of the goodness of god towards us and we also give so that through us the gospel will reach the ends of the earth father we pray that as we give we give in faith our offerings are a sweet smell before you and thank you for the blessing that is upon this house and the blessing that is all over the continent the spirit of god stirring up the people of god to do greater things in the days to come we give you praise for glory and grace that is upon this atmosphere on all those in the house centers and campuses around the world everyone impacted by the spirit of god we give you praise for answered prayer in jesus precious name amen praise god all right we thank you for giving don't go away i'm joining mr michael bush in the next one minute or so and then we'll come back to you by way of answering your your emails and questions and all the things that we need to respond to you so stay with us get more people to hook up to the service until i see you in the next one minute in the other segment of the broadcast enjoy the grace of christ let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service glory amen